everyone and welcome back to a new video. So today is Saturday, April 22nd and tomorrow on Shakespeare's birthday, National Library Week starts. So National Library Week is, if you don't know, a week to basically celebrate your libraries. It's self-explanatory, but it's a time to go through the library, check out books that you would otherwise buy, and read them. We often forget how important libraries are as a resource for our books and just how accessible they are. Beyond checking out books at your library, it's also a community center. So anyway, Ian and I decided that we would take a trip to our local library and peruse a bit and just see what piques our interest. So I figured I'd show you some clips of our library trip and then give you a little bit of a haul afterwards. So I will see you soon. So the first book that I want to talk about is an Ally Smith that I actually haven't heard of before and that is a short story collection called Public Library. So you may have guessed, but this is a series of stories on the power of books and Ally Smith asks a number of questions which she tackles in each of these stories. Namely, why are books and other forms so very powerful? What do the books we've read over the course of our lives? our own personal libraries make of us, and what does the unraveling of our tradition of public libraries, so hard won but now in jeopardy, say about us? Woven in between these stories, discussing and unraveling these questions are conversations with writers and readers reflecting on the essential role of libraries, on the essential role of stories in our lives, the ones we create ourselves and the ones that we read and collect. Allie Smith is fantastic. I would highly suggest reading her seasonal quartet and I am quite excited to add this to my red pile. The next book I have never heard of but I stumbled upon it while just checking out the shelves and this is right up my alley. I think I've mentioned on this channel before that when I'm not watching YouTube or reading hard-hitting <laughs> literary fiction I'm often just watching BBC PBS series. Um, a lot of Cozy Mystery, like Father Brown and Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries and Agatha Raisin, Miss Marvel. I love that kind of media. It's just very calming for me. So I picked up a book that is very illustrative of the kind of television that I like to watch, and that is Louis de Beniers, uh, Notwithstanding Stories from an English Village. So the village itself is called Notwithstanding, which is which is a clever and a notable pun. So as a world around it marches forward, the bucolic English village of Notwithstanding remains unchanged. It is, as it always has been, a place of pubs and cricket pitches where local eccentrics, a retired general who has eschewed clothes, a spiritualist living with the ghost of her husband, and a dog named Archibald Scott Moncrief almost fits in. So this is yet another collection of short stories, except in this the author is conjuring up the rural idealized version of countryside towns and England. So I think I'm actually going to start with this book because it's a cloudy cold day and I thought I would settle down and watch probably Agatha Raisin. <laughs> the next book is not unheard of in 
the literary circle of which I am part, and that is Arlington Park by Rachel Cusk. Arlington Park, a modern-day English suburb very much like its American counterparts, is a place devoted to the profitable ordinariness of life. So this is kind of a an interesting subpart to the short story collection I was just talking about, yet yeah, probably more in a analytical and literary sense, because as we know, Rachel Cusk likes to analyze and philosophize. So this story is set over the course of a single rainy day. The novel moves from one household to another and through the passing hours conducts a deep examination of its characters' lives, of Juliet, enraged at the victory of men and over women uh, in family life, of Amanda, warding off thoughts of death with obsessive housework, of Sally, who confronts her own buried femininity and the person of her Italian lodger. And then there's other female characters that she writes stories about, Maisie and Christine, darkly comic, deeply affecting, and wise, which is usually applied to Rachel Cusk's work. And while we are on the topic of Rachel Cusk, I was curious if anyone has read The Temporary. I have a copy on my shelf that I own, um, and I'm curious about reading, but I'm wondering if it has sort of mixed reviews. <coughs> I'm curious. About anyone's thoughts on that. Um, lastly, this is a book that was brought to my attention by, I can't remember the name, but I will put their Instagram name here. Um, but anyway, they mentioned this book when I was discussing the Disability Readathon, uh, my TBR for that challenge. The book is Because We Are Bad, OCD, and A Girl Lost and Bought by Lily Bailey. I've been informed that there are some hard-hitting and intense parts of this um, memoir, and to be wary of that, but this is a story of Lily Bailey, the author. By the age of 13, she was convinced she was bad. She had killed someone with a thought, spread untold disease, and ogled the bodies of other children. Only by performing an exhausting series of secret routines could she make up for what she'd done, but no matter how intricate or repetitive, no act of penance was ever enough. So, I think I've mentioned here before that I was diagnosed with OCD, so reading about other people's experiences and thoughts on having a disorder is helpful in a way, and it makes you feel less bad. <laughs> So anyway, this is a brief video. I hope you're okay with that, but I did only check out four books. I thought that this was a reasonable number. I hope you enjoyed this brief little vloggy book haul, library book haul, and I hope you will be taking advantage of National Library Week and your library in general any time of the month. As I said before, it's a great and useful resource. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. I post every Sunday and I will see you in the next video. Bye!